Northeastern Wisconsin got a wake up call when a mysterious Subaru shows up unlocked and abandoned near the Green Bay Packers Stadium Lambeau Field. Who would have any motive to get rid of Amber? <laughs> the father of the baby if he didn't want anything to do with it. In 1998, Amber Wilde was four months pregnant. She was pre-med at the University of Green Bay, Wisconsin, with plans to become a pediatrician. Amber then disappears. Here's the twist. The father of her unborn child was engaged to be married to another woman. So the question remains, what happened to Amber Wilde? Hey guys, I'm Kendra Summer and welcome to True Crime Commute. True crime stories that are perfect for your drive to school, work, or wherever you're headed. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. We post new True Crime Commute episodes every Friday. On the morning of September 23rd, 1998, 19-year-old Amber was driving to school when she got in a minor fender bender. Amber was not seriously injured in the accident, but she did hit her head and ended up having a minor headache. She gets checked out by the university's medical. They tell her that she most likely has a concussion and to make sure that somebody's checking in on her regularly. And this will be Amber's father. He checks in on her periodically throughout the day and he will be the last person to speak with Amber. Amber tells her father that she's worried about sleeping through her alarm and missing class and asks him if he can call her to make sure she's awake. Amber was very studious and had scholarships to maintain. So the next day, she's not answering her phone when her dad calls. He gets concerned and ends up driving to her Green Bay apartment. I had a key for her apartment, so I was able to go in there. You know, there was nothing that had been going on in that apartment. Nothing really jumped out. And he notices that her car's missing. At that point, he decides to call the Green Bay Police Department. Then a couple days later, her car mysteriously shows up across the street from Lambeau Field, the Green Bay Packers Stadium. Her car was found unlocked. Keys were in the car. Her purse was located in the trunk of the car and her, her cell phone was actually located on the front seat of the car, still plugged in. Then another clue. Amber, she's short, she's 5'2". When she drove her car, it was always pushed way up against the steering wheel. And when police found her vehicle, the driver's seat was pushed way back, indicating that Amber was not the last person to drive her car. What did that indicate to you? Could be one of two things. Someone either did it intentionally to throw us off or someone very tall was the last person to drive the car. Two days before her disappearance, Amber had taken her car into the shop to be serviced. The mileage at that time had been recorded. The vehicle now had 900 additional miles that had been unaccounted for. Where did these additional 900 miles come from? And who was driving Amber's car? Let's dive into the theories. In May of 1998, Amber meets Matt Schneider. He's a Brown County construction worker who's contracted by the Department of Transportation to work on the Highway 29 state upgrade project between Green Bay, Wisconsin and Wausau, Wisconsin. And at this party, these two hit it off. And I guess Matt Schneider forgot to tell Amber he was engaged to a different woman, his high school sweetheart. After a one night fling that May, Amber soon finds out she's pregnant. Her romance with Matt was well documented in her journal. Amber tells Matt that she's pregnant with his child and the alleged father wants nothing to do with Amber or the baby. He wanted her to have an abortion. He didn't want anything to do with it. She told me she never would do that. Amber then tells Schneider's fiance and the Wilde family that she's expecting Matt's child. According to her journal entries, Matt was furious about this. In recently unsealed documents, the public learned that the police believed in 1998 Amber was murdered and the police named Matt Schneider a suspect in Amber's disappearance. Law enforcement also believes Schneider had an accomplice or confidant. The document named Nick Pettit as a person of interest in the case as well. We'll talk about Nick Pettit in a minute. When police initially approached Matt Schneider, he denied knowing Amber or having any kind of relations with her. According to authorities at this interview, Matt did not show any kind of emotion or concern about Amber missing. What did Matt Schneider tell you? He denied to the initial detectives ever having a sexual relationship with Amber. After that, Matt was quick to lawyer up and stop talking to authorities immediately. With the help of Amber's journal, police were able to reference that against Matt Schneider's phone records. Phone records show that they talked 60 times between May and September. How crucial is Amber's diary? It's very crucial. It paints a good picture of her life. It's odd, you're almost like you're reading this diary and you're asking Amber to speak to you about her murder. Yes speak to us from the grave, wherever that grave may be. 
To this day, Matt Schneider has not taken a polygraph or given an alibi for the night that Amber disappeared. Matt Schneider, we're investigating the disappearance of Amber Wilde. You remember her, right? She accused you of fathering her unborn child. I have nothing to say. The police of, oh, you have nothing to say? Or, did you have sex with Amber? Are you the father of that unborn baby? Yeah, are you trying to bury the truth? Warrants confirm that many digs searching for Amber's remains have taken place on Highway 29 and other parts of Wisconsin. Back to Nick Pettit. Matt Schneider and Nick Pettit both worked as contractors for the Department of Transportation state upgrade project on Highway 29 in 1998. Allegedly, when questioned by police, Nick Pettit gave a detailed description of Wildey's car. Now, this was before police had released information on the vehicle. In 1998, Pettit and his girlfriend, now wife, told police in October 98 that Pettit had come home from work about 6 p.m. A year later, in a John Doe hearing held in Brown County Circuit Court, Pettit and his girlfriend both testified Pettit was not home that evening, and his girlfriend had made several phone calls to try to find out where he was. Pettit testified he most likely was not home that night, but couldn't remember where he had been or what he had done. In 2014, Pettit told police that him and Schneider were not close. Schneider's girlfriend, now wife, told police that Pettit had been an usher in their wedding and that Schneider had known Pettit long before 1998. Amber's family and the Green Bay Police Department continue to search for justice in Amber's disappearance. As of 2024, no one has been charged with Amber Wildey's disappearance. Currently, her case is being investigated as a homicide. If you have any additional information on Amber Wildey's case, please call the Green Bay Police Department at this number here. And if you have any cases that you want us to look into, send us an email here. I'm Kendra Summer. Thanks for watching True Crime Commute, and we'll see you on a brand new episode next Friday.